It's Thursday, July 31st, and the weather is about to calm down for the first time in months. And here's our risk of severe weather today, and we can see that it's not going to be very widespread at all, except for a couple of isolated marginal conditional risk for severe weather. One back here in the Mid-Atlantic, then our other one out here in the Upper Plains. And we see just widespread areas of pretty much thunderstorm activity, but nothing severe or strong. And today's threat is going to be mostly driven by the conditional threat of some damaging 60 mile an hour winds. And both of these span our entire marginal risk areas. And then there is an isolated risk for some hail, possibly around one to one and a half inches in diameter out in the Upper Plains as well. And the Storm Prediction Center has also not outlined a tornado risk today, but I do think if there were to be a tornado, there is a non-zero potential out here in the Mid-Atlantic today. And then for tomorrow's outlook, there's actually no risk of severe weather currently outlined, which definitely indicates that calming trend that we're experiencing. And then more good news is that a lot of the U.S. is going to see some cooler temperatures around 70 degrees, pretty much anywhere above the southern plains and southeast and even up into the mid-Atlantic. But unfortunately, down in our southern plains, Mississippi River Valley, southeast and mid-Atlantic, there is still expected to be widespread low 100s feels like temperatures today. And moving on to some not so good news, there is actually the significant threat of some flash flooding with excessive rainfall out here in New England in the Mid-Atlantic today, specifically centered on a corridor stretching from Baltimore all the way up into New York City. In this area, there is a conditional threat of widespread four inch swaths of rain. And then in our slight risk surrounding that moderate threat, there is also gonna be the pretty large threat for some swaths anywhere between two to four inches of rain. And we actually have a very large marginal risk of some excessive rainfall or flash flooding, which spans all the way from the Northern Plains, Upper Plains, down into the Southwest, and through parts of the Southern Plains, Mississippi and Ohio River, valleys and then back into parts of the northeast as well which would be for that conditional threat of one to two inches of rain so not really as big of a flash flooding threat with those and here's what the radar could look like in our northeastern risk area for potentially some flooding and some damaging gusts around 60 miles an hour we're going to see that we're going to get some storm initiation possibly around midday along an area of troughing frontal activity and even a couple of low pressure systems embedded in that front. And what we're going to notice is that it's going to be a much more linear mode of storms, except in the earlier stages, I do think there would be the possibility of potentially a weak spin up tornado, but mostly it's just going to be for some clusters bringing some damaging winds to the region, specifically anywhere ranging from New York City all the way down to Washington, D.C. Now, these storms would push through the area in the late afternoon to evening hours, and then after that, they'll likely push off into the Atlantic, and then that threat with these storms would be over. And another thing to know is that in the southeast, we could see potentially some strong storms, probably not severe, though, along our front, which is going to extend all the way down back into the southern plains. And there is also the potential for a couple of embedded low-pressure systems back here, which could bring some stronger storm clusters with mostly a damaging wind threat. And our last area of concern is going to be out here in the upper plains today, specifically stretching from a corridor from Denver all the way up into northwestern Wyoming, which will hold that conditional threat for some hail anywhere between one and a half inches in diameter with some damaging winds anywhere between 60 to 70 miles an hour today. And it looks like these storms would get their start around midday and then would push out into the evening hours with some possibly longer lasting clusters. A couple areas which pique my interest are up here in northeastern Colorado then out here in central Wyoming. And then the threat with these storms will pretty much be over as we go into the very early morning hours on Friday. And here are our 500 millibar winds. These help to bring some organizational shear and help to initiate our storms as well. A couple of things that we're gonna notice are some flow out here back in our northeastern to mid-Atlantic risk area. This is going to help to organize and possibly initiate a couple of our storms, although the forcing here is not very large at all. We also have a high pressure system and some northwesterly flow out here in the upper plains, and even a short wave pushing through aloft around Wyoming and Colorado. This would probably help to initiate a couple of storms and also bring some more organizing shear to them up well, definitely more in that corridor from northeastern Colorado all the way up in two parts of eastern Wyoming. And here's a look at our environment from our Upper Plains risk area today. We can see that we have a somewhat elongated holograph, which is pretty expected for this region at this time of year. However, we don't see loads of organizational shear, so possibly these storms could struggle a bit to get organized and last a very long time. We do, however, see some very weak wind vane, which would help to organize them. But the main things are that we see enough moisture for this region and elevation and we see a modestly unstable environment at around 2,500 Cape, so definitely favorable for severe weather today. Another thing we see is some drier loft, which could potentially help 
with that threat of damaging winds, then a decently high downdraft cape at around 1,500. So another reason why it looks like there could be some damaging winds. Now, these storms are mostly expected to be just high-based wind and hail makers. For some reasons for the hail threat, it's going to be the decent bit of cape up here near our freezing level, then a pretty extremely high mid-level lapse rate at around 8.8 .8 Celsius, decreasing per kilometer. So a reason why there could be some hail potentially even reaching up to 1.5 inches in diameter today. Then the last environment we're going to look at is out here in the mid-Atlantic to northeast and even into New England. Our hodograph isn't really going to look that special at all. Then our organizational shear isn't really going to be that great either, but we do have a decently low lowest cloud level and we also have a three cape of around 184 and there's a potential to be some more favorable shear because this is expected to be in front of a low pressure system so that is a couple reasons why i think that tornado threat is non-zero out here although it's still going to be extremely low but the main thing is that we have a very moist environment 76 dew point and a pretty unstable environment as well are around three thousand cape so just things that would be favorable for severe weather now the main thing with these storms along with that threat of some damaging winds is going to be the pretty high flooding threat and this is going to be fueled by a extremely high precipital water at around two inches so that could also feel that threat of some damaging gusts as well with that stronger downdrafts and then also just the general threat for some big flood risk out here in parts of new england the mid-atlantic and even up to the northeast